this man with the tight jeans has sold his soul to the devil, and he wants you to do the same thing. Questioning a person's salvation is not something that you should do lightly, but there are those that make it easy to do so. One such person is this person with this horrible, garbage, trash theology, this practice that he wants to hoist upon other people to take advantage or to make merchandise of you. This person is the great apostle, false apostle, Jonathan Ferguson. Whenever you see luxury, don't despise it, but rather learn to love it because keeping it in front of you is the only way to attract it. Oftentimes someone will tell you all you need to know about them by simply listening, by just watching them. And this is one person. He is all about money. Now he will tell you, and eventually we're gonna hear him tell you that it's okay to brag about what you have. However, uh, what the Bible does tells us, such as in Psalm 27, some boast in chariots and some in horses, which is what he does, but we will boast in the name of our Lord God. What he puts his trust in, his boast in, is his wealth. How do I know? Well, here's a person who has named his cars. This particular video is called Meet My Cars. And so here we have Barbie, nice look beautiful car then we've got lion also a beautiful car then we've got chanel another beautiful car and then this car just simply called black wonderful and this is his old car i guess he wants to show you where he's come from wonderful bravo i applaud you for having money i applaud you for having things i don't applaud you for aspiring to those things and i certainly do not nor does god applaud you for boasting in those things and pushing those things out front as though that is the aim Paul says this, but those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a snare. Paul says this, that those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a snare and many foolish and harmful desires, which plunge men into ruin and destruction. Why does he say so? For the love of money is a root of all sorts of evil. And some by longing for it have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. And so what's happening here is he is causing people to leave the true doctrine, the faith, the tenets of the faith, and think that what's happening here is what the faith is about. These sets, these tenets, these beliefs, this is what it's about versus these sets. Well, what he's doing is he's putting people's focus on another doctrine, another gospel, so to speak. How do I know? Well, He's a false teacher. He has these fake miracles, people falling out because he's blowing on them. And then look at this foolish display of someone who is not dead, but he says is dead. There's no actual evidence, but he claims they're dead and that he, and that he brought them back to life with his power. And then listen to what he credits the power to be for. We're about to see proof of a man who was dead and came back to life. We're gonna see the timestamp of the moment that the nurses recorded that he died. When I died, this is the time step. I raise a body. There just happens to be nurses there. And number one, more importantly, nurses don't determine if you are dead or alive. A doctor has to do so. And then it's done at a hospital. But more to the point, uh, we don't know. We have no clue, no evidence whatsoever that the person is dead. This is clearly a, uh, a hoax. But listen to what he says and what he credits the power to do. I don't First of all, before we continue, let's look at Deuteronomy 8 and let's understand who he's talking about and why. He says, otherwise, he's speaking to the children of Israel as they're going to the land. You may say in your heart, my power and my strength of my hand made me this way, made me this wealth. No, your power and your strength does not give you this wealth. You don't have the power in and of yourself is what he's telling them to get wealth. But remember, God has already told them that Abraham and his descendants will have this wealth. They will come out of the land with this great wealth. This was prophesied long before they even went into slavery and then coming out, he promised they would have this great wealth. He says, but you shall remember that the Lord your God, for it is he who has given you power to make wealth, 
Now, is it us, everyone? No, obviously he's not giving everyone the power to make wealth or to get wealth, but he's speaking to them and them only. Not all Jews, by the way, have this great power. Don't skip past that too fast. Don't get deep and mystical now. Power is practical. And the same power that brought this dead man back to life is the same power that's been giving me practical language to explain to you how to build wealth. This guy is a liar. He's a moron. He is a charlatan. He is without question evil and wicked because he's pointing people to wealth. He's pointing people to have a desire to have wealth. And what is that going to do? It's going to naturally lead them from the Lord. 80% of what I offer to help people transform is not available to the public, although I've worked very hard to make this page binge watchable. The point is my next video like this should be me coaching you. In my private membership, I scout out potential, I expose them to greatness, and I provide additional coaching. The guy you just saw, I coached into doing a marketing campaign for Peloton. I heard a lot of influencers are doing fake jet videos these days, so I stopped the music. You can hear the engine, and you can look over my right shoulder and see the takeoff. This is real, and you are next. So what he's trying to do is he's trying to entice people to go after that. But again, if you desire to be wealthy, to be rich, you yourself more than likely are going to fall into some sort of snare. Being wealthy, being rich is not a problem. It's the desire to get there. Now, going back to that particular video where he's showing off his cars at the very end, notice what he says. He says it's not bragging, but he calls it remembering. Well, that's fine. Remembering where you came from and then where God has brought you. You're giving the credit to God, I guess. I don't know. Um, but you're putting the focus on those things. This is why he's going to hell. This is why he's going to take others to hell with him. This is why him his cars, his money will all be in hell with him and those that follow him and they can look around and then compare bank accounts in hell. You right back there? <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with him being some sort of financial coach or wealth coach or whatever, uh, where you're just kind of coaching people along how to be better in business. That's fine. That is perfectly fine. But one, you call yourself apostle, which is false. And then two, you mix it to what you're doing is you're bringing people in your fold just for this. We saw before how you go to his church's website. They have service once a month and you have to RSVP there. What kind of church is that? Well, because this is a business venture. He's using the people of God, the foolish people of God, I might add, to exploit them. The, the Bible tells talks about this. Paul says that they will exploit you. And this is what he's doing. He is one of those that are want, that are wanting to exploit the people of God, or at least those that profess to be so foolish people. And so what sort of thing do we see here? This is a business venture. Make no mistake about it. This man has sold his soul to the devil. And what's interesting about it, he will tell you that it's impossible to sell your soul to the devil. You cannot sell your soul to the devil for wealth. He owns none of it. People read the scripture when Jesus was taken on a high mountain and the devil said, I'll give you everything in the world. And they interpret that to mean that the devil can give people the world. And the devil cannot give people the world. The devil tricks people into a bad contract. You didn't sell your soul to the devil. It's too expensive for him. Hell is too cheap to buy your soul. Let's make it plain. It was a liar that told Jesus, I could give you the world because he could not deliver. Because Psalms 24 already told us the earth belongs to God and everything in it. The Bible also tells us that the devil is the God of this world. Obviously, everything belongs to God. God exercises authority over it. But right now, at this time, who does the Bible say is the God of this world? Who's the Bible says the person of the areas? Notice what Jesus did not say to the devil. He did not say, you can't do that. Now, he's speaking to the one that created him. And so obviously, whatever Jesus wants, he could get. But let's read the passage, Matthew 4, 8. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. These are his kingdoms. These are the ones that submit and succumb to the devil. And he said to him, all these things I will give to you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus says to, to him, go, Satan, for it is written, you should not worship the Lord. You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. He did not come back and say what he said. And so he does have power. How do we know? Well, the Bible tells us this. The Bible says that for all that is in the world, the lust of the, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. 
Who is the God of this world? Well, the devil is the God of this world. All the devil did was lie to get you into a bad contract because the devil knew that God rewards all hard workers. His Bible. He reigns on the just and the unjust. Now listen to this foolishness as he gives even those who are in um, pagan faith, uh, ungodly religions, as he says that even those people can be blessed by God financially. God will release the blessing on any hard worker. If you have money and you are a Hindu, Jesus blessed you. If you are an atheist, Jesus blessed you. If you are a Muslim, Jesus blessed you. Did he bless you because of your faith orientation? Absolutely not. He blessed you because of your work ethic. So he blesses you because of your work ethic, irrespective of the fact that you have turned your back on him. Does that even make sense? This man is ungodly. I don't know. I don't necessarily want to call him stupid. I don't think he's stupid. I think he's just evil. I think he's just wicked. I think he likes the toys that he can get with money. Don't know how much money he has. Don't really care. All I do know is what he's doing for other people and the bill of goods that he's selling people. He's selling them something rotten. The Bible tells us that those, for those of you who want to listen to this man, here is the warning to you. What profit a man to gain the whole wide world and then also to forfeit or lose his soul? You will lose your soul trying to do what he's doing, trying to go after the things of the world. Remember, it was in Luke 8 where Jesus is speaking about those people who have heard the word, but when the richest of the world come before them, the desires of the world come before them, it's the devil who will dangle those things before them and what happens they end up leaving what they heard now their heart isn't right which is the problem because jesus tells us that the word falling on a bad heart is a problem the word falling on a good heart those people will bear fruit uh forever uh, with perseverance. But what he's trying to do here is he's not trying to bring you in with the word of God. He's trying to bring you in with gold, with silver, with jets, with cars. You can have all those things if you want to. I'm not saying you can't get those things. You can have those things. But again, as Jesus' warning was, at what cost? Would it be your soul like his?